The Vampire by Conrad Aiken She rose among us where we lay. She wept, we put our work away. She chilled our laughter, stilled our play, and spread a silence there. Darkness shot across the sky, and once and twice we heard her cry, and saw her lift white hands on high and toss her troubled hair. Which shape was this who came to us, with basilisk eyes so ominous, with mouth so sweet, so poisonous, and tortured hands so pale. We saw her wavering to and fro. Through darkened wind we saw her go. Yet what her name was did not know, and felt our spirits fail. We tried to turn away, but still, above we heard her sorrow thrill, and to those that slept they dreamed of ill and dreadful things. Of skies grown red with rending flames, and shuddering hills that cracked their frames, of twilights foul with wings, and skeletons dancing to a tune, and cries of children stifled soon, and over all a blood red moon, a dull and nightmare sighs. They woke and sought to go their ways, yet everywhere they met her gaze, her fixed and burning eyes. Who are you now? we cried to her. Spirit so strange, so sinister, we felt dead winds above us stir, and in the darkness heard a voice fall, singing, cloying sweet, heavily dropping, though that heat, heavy as honeyed pulses beat, slow word by anguished word, and through the night strange music went, with voice and cry so darkly blent, we could not fathom what they meant, save only that they seemed to thin the blood along our veins, foretelling vile, delirious pains, and clouds divulging blood-red rains upon a hill undreamed. And this we heard, who dies for me, he shall possess me secretly, my terrible beauty he shall see, and slake my body's flame. But who denies me, cursed shall be, and slain, and buried loathsomely, and slimed upon with shame. And darkness fell, and like a sea of stumbling deaths we followed, we who dared not stay behind. There all night, long beneath a cloud, we rose and fell, we struck and bowed, we were the plowman and the plowed. Our eyes were red and blind, and some, they said, had touched her side, before she fled us there, and some had taken her to bride, and some lain down for her and died, who had not touched her hair, ran to and fro, and cursed, and cried, and sought her everywhere. Her eyes have feasted on the dead, and small and shapely is her head, and dark and small her mouth, they said, and beautiful to kiss. Her mouth is sinister and red, as blood and moonlight is. Then poets forgot their jeweled words, and cut the sky with glittering swords, and innocent souls turned carrion birds to perch upon the dead. Sweet daisy fields were drenched with death. The air became a charnel breath. Pale stones were splashed with red. Green leaves were dappled bright with blood, and fruit trees murdered in the bud. And when at length the dawn came green as twilight from the east, and all that heaving horror ceased, Silent was every bird and beast, and that dark voice was gone. No word was there, no song, no bell, no furious tongue that dreamed to tell, only the dead who rose and fell above the wounded men, and whisperings and wails of pain, blown slowly from the wounded grain, blown slowly from the smoking plain, and silence fallen again. Until at dusk, from God knows where, beneath dark birds that filled the air, like one who did not hear or care under a blood-red cloud, an aged plowman came alone, and drove his share through flesh and bone, and turned them under to mold and stone. All night, all night long, he plowed.